Okay, now we'll study derivative mode control of the same server over here. Um, let's look a little bit into the intuition of derivative mode control. And let's again look at the value in time. So this is time, this is y of t. And let's again say that the reference values are constant like that. That's r, and perhaps you set it to 1 just for simplicity. Um, what derivative mode control says is that let's say that we're looking at the difference between r and y. And let's say that r is, sorry, y is uh, approaching r very slowly, like so, versus y is approaching r very quickly, like that. Or in the other way around, if it's coming down like this very gently, or it's coming down like that very fast. As you can see, when we have the value coming down slowly, like this one or this one, uh, we are sort of settling in to the desired value fairly well. And so we don't even want to take any abrupt control actions. Whereas if you have approaching the desired state very fast, like in these two other situations, then it's probably not a good idea to do something very rapid because this might cause problems later because you're going to overshoot or undershoot. So it's sort of, uh, imagine you're driving a car and your uh, target rate is uh, 60 miles an hour and you're at 55. You probably don't want to press the accelerator too hard. Whereas if you're at 20, you probably want to press the accelerator hard. So uh, it's not just the difference in error, but also how fast you're approaching the desired goal that tells us what derivative mode control does. So derivative mode control, we're taking into account the speed at which the control uh, set point is being reached. Okay. Uh, now, when you have a constant amount of error, uh, so let me just uh, get rid of the stuff here and redraw this a little bit. So this is over here. Let's say that the value of y is like this. In other words, it's a constant error between y and r. Then you see that the derivative is zero, and the derivative board controller will actually do no work at all. It's saying, well, you know, there's no change. And so a derivative board controller will sustain an error indefinitely, so it cannot be used on its own. We should always use it in combination with uh, typically proportional mode and integral mode as well. Okay, uh, the other product derivative mode control is that it is a, it's quite susceptible to noise. So instead of this smooth line, imagine that the Y looked like this uh, and it was approaching this. What is going to happen is that as we zoom in into this uh, squiggly line over here, you're going to find that and these there's a very large change in the slope over here. The slope here is very high. It's very high again. So these spikiness in the slope will lead to very fast oscillations in the control. And so it's generally not a good idea to use derivative mode control with the unfiltered value of the y. You need to use it along with a very uh, with a low pass filter to remove the noisiness before you start using derivative mode control. Um, so with the uh, in derivative mode control, remember that the control value u is given by kd dE by dt, or in the transform domain u is given by kd e uh, s, where uh, where e is the uh, Laplace transform of the error term. Now to go back to this example over here, we know that uh, the uh, g s is given by one over s and the uh, so u is going to be given uh, and u is given by kd uh, r minus y s because e since uh, e equals r minus y again in the transform domain and so we can write y equals one over s which is g u minus w and this is going to be one over s and just uh, expanding this out uh, k d r minus y s minus w. And if you rearrange this, we get y equals basically k d over 1 plus k d uh, r minus, and this is the transient response to the disturbance, s times 1 plus k d uh, w. And so we see that the disturbance is being uh, attenuated by the ratio 1 plus kd, which is the disturbance rejection part uh, of the controller. 
to study how it behaves uh, with time, we, uh, as before, we're going to set R equals the way what you want it to be, which is 1t. And so the tra Laplace transform of that is going to be 1 over s. And, uh, and then we set w equals 0, which is assuming there's no disturbance. You just want to know what happens uh, when you give it a control input of ut, uh, or in this case, a single step t. Uh, then we get y equals kd over 1 plus kdr or 1, one plus s, 1 over s. And so y of t is just going to be uh, the value uh, kd over 1 plus kd. Uh, in other words, we are going to have y of t. So this is the value r that we want. And this is time over here. This is by t. And it's going to be uh, having a value of, uh, this is 1. Uh, it's going to be kd 1 plus kd. So it's going to be slightly below. And this value is kd over 1 plus kd. And so there's a steady state uh, error over here. Uh, because we are we are not actually at R, and again that's because uh, if we start out with the right value, it never actually changes. So the derivative mode says there's nothing more to be done. So uh, this is sort of a relatively simple example of uh, derivative mode control. And in practice, what we do is that we would combine all three modes. So in that case, the control law u is going to be kp for control of the proportionality loop gain plus ki over s plus kds times e. And using this control law, or the Laplace transform of that in time domain, we will be able to tune the uh, proportionality constant of loop gain for the proportional mode the integral mode and the derivative mode in order to achieve control actions. And this is what we do with the PID controller. So in a typical PID controller, you literally uh, sort of, well, not literally, but you end up getting three knobs you can turn. And you can turn each of these knobs, which are the KP, KI, and KS. And by setting these knobs appropriately, you can have your PID controller box essentially mimic a wide range of control actions. And uh, for somebody who's uh, trained in this, they can see, oh, we need to trim the p value or the i value and the d value, and there are rules of thumb you can use in order to uh, choose these values appropriately.